It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to be analyzing graphs using linear, nonlinear, intervals, increasing, and decreasing. Here are our objectives today. You are going to be able to analyze a graph of a functional relationship between two quantities. You will also be able to identify where and or if a function is increasing or decreasing, and then you will be able to describe qualitative features of a function. Here's the essential question I'd like you thinking about as I proceed through the lesson today. How can you describe a relationship between two quantities qualitatively? So here's some vocabulary as we begin. We are going to use qualitative graphs. These are graphs without numbers that represent functions visually. We're going to talk about intervals, which are the space between events or segments representing the domain inputs, your x values. We're going to use linear, which refers to straight lines or segments. Nonlinear, which refers to curved lines or segments. Increasing, which means you're curving or slanting upward as you read a graph left to right and then decreasing, which is curving or slanting downward when we look at a graph left to right. We will also use the vocabulary word constant, which is unchanging or flat or horizontal part of a graph. All right, here's our first qualitative graph and we're gonna analyze it. We can see our title here, climbing a ladder, and it's showing the relationship between time and the distance from the ground. The graph represents someone climbing a ladder to reach a shelf, selecting an item from the shelf, and then climbing down the ladder. So our first thing that happens as we're reading our graph left to right, just as you read your paragraph, is we know that someone is climbing a ladder. So when we look at a graph, this first segment, this linear part, it's not curved, it's a straight segment, so it's linear, and it's increasing. So you could see it, if it were a line, it would have a positive slope. As we read, it goes up left to right, it's increasing. This represents somebody climbing the ladder. We can also say they're climbing at a constant rate, right? Because it's the same slope, it's not curved, just the speed isn't changing. However, this doesn't represent the speed, it represents the distance from the ground, but that's changing at a constant rate over time. Now, the second thing that happens is whoever's climbing the ladder selects the item from the shelf. So that's represented in this horizontal or constant part of our graph. This is where they've paused and their distance from the ground is not changing, but time is elapsing. So they're making their selection of what they're taking off the shelf. And then the third thing that happens is they're climbing down the ladder, which is represented here. So the distance from the ground is high and it goes down to the ground. Now, what makes this a qualitative graph are there are no numbers on this. So we don't know how much time has elapsed and we don't know how far they went up the ladder. So what distance, what height they are off the ground. We just know that they went a certain height over that period of time up the ladder, time elapsed, but their height did not change from the ground. And then they climbed down the ladder back to the ground. So an increasing section, a constant section, and a decreasing section. All right, here we have another qualitative graph showing a bike ride and the relationship between time and the speed of the bike. So we're asked to identify the section where the bike rider is going the fastest, the section where the bike rider is going the slowest, and the section where the bike rider is not changing speed. So I would like you to pause the video here identify those three sections, and then come back to check your work. Good luck. Welcome back. Let's begin by reviewing the section that shows the fastest. Because this represents speed, we're looking for the steepest part of the graph, which is right here. This is the part of the graph that is increasing at a faster rate because the steepness of the line is the greatest. Then the section where the bike is going the slowest is the one that's less steep. So here it's increasing, but at a slower rate. So we can see more time has elapsed for it to go from here to here, 
Whereas look at how short of time has elapsed here from our speed to go from here to here. So although we don't know how much time has elapsed or what speed it is, we can see that we have a shorter amount of time and a longer amount of time. And then the section that is not changing where the speed remains constant is right in here. So we have a horizontal-ish, it's not completely straight, but it looks like it's straight. It stops increasing for a period of time and the bike is going at a constant speed. So we could talk about this. What could this represent in our real world? So maybe the bike or the biker is climbing a hill. So they're having to pedal much slower. Their speed is much slower because they're, well, they're pedaling harder, but their speed is slower because they're going up a hill. Maybe they reach a flat part and they're pedaling at a constant rate. And then what makes you go faster on a bike? Maybe they're going down a hill. Here's where students struggle. They see this and they're like, oh, but that's going uphill. But don't you have to go slower, right? Most people pedal fast, but they're going at a slower rate up the hill and then they're cruising down the hill. The speed of the bike would increase. So it's just a possible scenario of this bike ride. All right, now we have a qualitative graph of a road trip. Again, it's a qualitative graph because we don't have any intervals special uh, specified here. There's no numbers, but it shows the relationship between time and speed of our road trip. We're asked to identify the section of the graph that is increasing in a linearly fashion and the section of the graph that is increasing in a nonlinear fashion. So go ahead and pause and see if you can identify those two sections of this qualitative graph and come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So first we're going to talk about increasing in a linearly fashion. And here we have, we're looking for our straight segment. So this is increasing at a constant rate. So we know that that's what's special about a line when we graph a line, that it has a slope or a constant rate of change. Here, where we have a curve, we know that this is non-linear, but we can see that it's increasing from left to right, so we can say that this is increasing at an increasing rate. It's not a constant rate, the, it's changing, right? It's curved. So it's increasing at an increasing rate, as this section is linear in increasing at a constant rate. So if you were asked to describe, if it's a straight segment, you can say constant rate, and if it's a curved section, you want to either say increasing or decreasing rate, depending on whether it's going up from left to right or going down. All right, here's your turn. I'd like you to pause the video and select which of the four graphs represents a decreasing linear function. Good luck. Welcome back. So let's review our solution. The first thing I want to go over is what a linear function is. Just to review. A linear function is a function that represents a straight, non-vertical line on a coordinate plane. Remember, a vertical line fails the vertical line test and is not a function. So it's still a line, it's just not a linear function. So let's look at our four choices and look for a line that is non-vertical. So we can see that A has a curve here. It's what we call a parabola, a quadratic function. So we can rule out choice A. That is not linear. B is a line, it's linear. C is not linear, again it's curved, and D is a linear function. It would pass the vertical line test. So we know now know that it's either B or D. Now we look at our second defining word here, decreasing. Decreasing linear function will have a negative slope. The line will be decreasing left to right, so sloping down. It's gonna be decreasing, going down as you read the graph. So I look at B, and as I read the graph, I'm definitely going downward on my line. Let's check out D just to be sure. On D, as I read my graph from left to right, I can see that I'm going up. It's increasing left to right. So D would be an increasing linear function, but we're asked for a decreasing linear function, which is graph B. Now let's talk about intervals. The graph of a function is shown. Knowing now that we had qualitative graphs that didn't have intervals on them, so here are intervals. They're defining specific numerical values on our axes. So our x is increasing by one left to right, and our y is increasing by one left to right. And that's what we call an interval. The intervals don't have to increase by one. 
as long as each interval represents the same distance. So it could increase by twos, by fives, by tens. The x-axis, our domain, could increase by ones, and our y-axis could increase by fives. So they can increase at different intervals as long as within the y-axis it's the same interval, and on the x-axis it's the same interval, meaning you can't increase by one, and then by five, and then by three. These have to be the same. Okay. So now we're going to go on and we're going to use this to talk about increasing intervals. So we're going to talk about this graph of this function that is shown. And we want to talk about just the intervals that are increasing. So practicing what we've used so far in this video, we can see that we have two intervals that are increasing. We have this section where it's going up as I read it left to right. Then we have a constant. It's increasing again, constant, and then decreasing. So now we're going to define what this interval is that is an increasing interval. So we can see that it starts increasing when x is equal to 0 and stops when x is equal to 2. And then it begins again. So let's define that. The function is increasing between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. And then it begins increasing again when x is equal to 4 and stops when x is equal to 5. So the function is increasing between x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 5. So we have two sections in our graph, and that is how you define the increasing intervals. Now I'd like you to pause the video and identify the intervals where the function is decreasing. Go ahead and pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we're talking about the decreasing interval. So we can see that that is this section of the graph. So it begins to decrease at x equals 6, and it stops at x equals 10. So we can say that the function is decreasing between x equals 6 and x equals 10. All right, here's your turn. We have a graph of skateboarding showing time and the relationship to the distance from home. So it's the same graph we just looked at, but now we've made it so that it's about skateboarding. We're told that the graph shows the relationship between time and the distance from home. During the time shown, you've left home, stopped at the park, visited a friend at their home, and then returned home. You're asked, did you spend more time at the park or visiting your friend? I'd like you to pause the video now, consider the graph, and answer the question. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So we're asked, spending more time at the park or did you spend more time visiting your friend? So if we're understanding this, we've left our home. So this is how far we are from home. So here we're at home. We go away from home and we stop at the park. So we spent this amount of time at the park from interval two to interval four. Then we continued from the park and we went to our friend's house and spent some time there between this interval. And then we left our friend and we went back home. So when we were at the park, we spent from two to four, which is two hours. And then the interval from the friends is we came down here and we were at our friend's house from five to six for one hour. So we can see that we spent more time at the park than we did visiting our friend. Specifically, we spent one more hour at the park than we did at our friend's house. All right, I have one more question for you. Same graph, same scenario. I'm asking you, did it take you longer to reach your friend's home or longer to return to your home? So go ahead and pause the video here, consider the question, and come back and hit play. Welcome back. So here we're going to talk about how long it took us to get to the friend's house. So at the friend's house, this is when we got to the friend's house, right here, after five hours. Then here's where we left the friend's house to go back home. Six to ten, one, two, three, four hours to get home. So it took us longer to get to our friend's house, likely because we stopped at that park for two hours before we got to our friend's house. But regardless, we took longer to reach our friend than we did to get back home. 
And that is how you analyze a graph talking about linear, nonlinear intervals, and increasing and decreasing parts of a graph. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Have a great day.